What are the key essentials of effective breaststroke pullouts? Hi everyone, Andrew here, helping you help your swimmers get faster. And in this video, we're gonna discuss the key skills that swimmers need to master in order to travel effectively and quickly underwater during breaststroke. So just like the other strokes, just like breaststroke in general, swimmers need to create a lot of propulsion as much as they can, and they need to minimize the resistance they create as they move through the water by optimizing their alignment. The major source of propulsion is going to be the arm pull, and to a lesser extent, the dolphin kick that they're going to take during the pullout. When it comes to alignment, it's managing the undulation that comes with the dolphin kick, as well as recovering the arms and the legs to begin the transition into breaststroke swimming. We'll take a look at all of it, go over the basic principles that apply, and provide you with some strategies that you can use to help your swimmers get faster. Let's dive in. When it comes to the arm pull, it's all about creating a big surface area with the hand and the forearm, orienting that surface area backwards, and then pulling backwards with as much acceleration as possible. So swimmers have to move from a streamlined position, they have to set up the stroke, and then they have to build the pressure as they move water backwards. So we'll take a look at the swimmer on the left. So he slides out, he gets everything facing backwards, and then it's pretty much a butterfly pull from there, and he pulls straight back. You can see right there, forearms are pretty much straight up and down, and he's moving them straight back to create propulsion, and you can see that little surge he gets as a result. Now, if we look at the swimmer in the center of the screen, I'm gonna use the same basic idea. He's gonna pull wider, he's gonna pull deeper, he's gonna pull straighter, and then he's gonna get a really great push through the back of the stroke there. And so different swimmers are gonna use a different strategy, likely dependent upon their strength, likely depending on the range of motion that they have access to. And so what's key is helping them figure out what's gonna be the best path that allows them to move as much water for as much distance with as much acceleration as possible. That's likely gonna to lead to different solutions for different swimmers, but it's those principles that apply to everyone. And so if swimmers aren't getting into effective positions or they're not accelerating the arms or they're not pulling in a more or less directly backward manner, that's going to lead to creating less propulsion than would otherwise be possible. Take a look at a couple other swimmers here. So the swimmer in the center of your screen, Again, she's gonna slide out, orient back, and then pull back. And so she has a little bit shallower of a pull, especially compared to the swimmer we just witnessed. So it's a different solution, but it may be optimal for this swimmer. The only way to really know is to experiment. And if we look at the swimmer on the left, again, sliding out, getting into a backward oriented position, you can see those forearms are starting to point down, and then pulling straight back, and with her timing of the dolphin kick, it looks very much like a butterfly stroke with the finish of the kick. So again, same principles, different solutions for different swimmers. They may or may not be the most effective solution for that swimmer, but we need to appreciate that different swimmers are gonna use different solutions because of the shape of their joints and the strength that they possess. So with these two swimmers, we're gonna see two different timing of the dolphin kick. The swimmer on the top, the swimmer on the right is gonna initiate the dolphin kick first and then take the pole. And then the swimmer on the left is going to pull and then take the dolphin kick. As with the pull, there may be some variation between different swimmers and how effectively they can use the dolphin kick and the best time to use the dolphin kick. My intuition is that the dolphin kick prior to the stroke is more effective than the dolphin kick later in the stroke. However, it's something that really needs to be experimented with different swimmers. And what's most important is to find the optimal kick for the optimal individual and what allows them to swim the fastest. At the end of the day, that's gonna be what's most effective. Those tend to be the two options that most swimmers will gravitate towards. Again, it's figuring out what's going to be best. Regardless, they have to use that kick to create propulsion and they gotta use that kick to keep the momentum of the stroke. Whether they put it in the beginning or the end is not as important as how much speed it creates. Again, I tend to like the dolphin kick in the beginning because I think it helps prolonged speed and helps them get into the pole a little bit faster. And the dolphin kick at the end doesn't tend to add quite as much because they've already created a lot of acceleration with the hands. But it doesn't really matter what I think, it ultimately matters what's going to work best for your swimmers and what allows them to create the most speed. One of the most important aspects of the pullout is maintaining really great alignment. And so it's the streamline coming off the wall, but also as they move through the undulation, while more undulation may result in a bigger dolphin kick and a more effective dolphin kick, it's also going to lead to more resistance as they disrupt the alignment. And so creating a kick, so using that dolphin kick, it's important to get some propulsion from it, but it can't come at the cost of creating a lot of extra resistance. So it has to be relatively tight. 
and it has to be relatively fast, and that's a key aspect of creating an effective kick. And then as we see here with these swimmers, look at the alignment that they maintain after the pullout. It's not just pull and then go. They've got to hold everything together. They've got to maintain alignment, and they have to maintain as much speed as they can to maximize the distance that they get while losing as little velocity as possible. So the better swimmers can manage their alignment in between the different phases of the pullout, the more successful they're going to be, precisely because they're not putting on the brakes. The pullout itself, the dolphin kick itself, is like hitting the gas, but if they just come out of alignment right away or they don't maintain their alignment at the end of the pullout, they're not going to maintain any of that speed because they're putting on the brakes right away. So like these swimmers, maintaining really effective alignment is key for maintaining the speed that's generated as a result of the pullout itself. So helping swimmers understand what really good alignment is and what really good posture is, is key. A lot of times they just focus on the pullout itself and that costs them a lot of speed because they're not paying attention to how well they're moving through the water after their pullout, which causes them to lose a lot of speed. Another key aspect of the pullout itself is the recovery and the transition from the pullout to surface swimming. And so obviously breaststrokers are going to be underwater. They have to transition up to the surface. The more gradual that process can be versus a very abrupt process, that's going to result in the maintenance of more speed. So if we watch the swimmer on the left here, you're going to see that her transition is going to be a lot more gradual, and that's going to result in more speed. She's not jackknifing up to the surface, and she's going to have a patient transition, and that's going to allow her to maintain as much speed as possible. If we watch the swimmer on the right here, her trajectory is a lot more abrupt right there. She's shooting herself up to the surface. While that may get her to the surface faster, she's probably going to lose more speed as a result because she's moving through the water at an angle, a much stiffer angle, which is going to create a lot more resistance on her body. So the more gradual swimmers can be, and they have to manage that, the trade-off of staying underwater too long, and that's the, one of the challenges. They want to have as smooth a transition to the surface as possible, but they also have to get to the surface before they lose any speed. So that's one of the challenges here, is how do they maintain alignment without losing much speed or without taking too long? So the more slippery their body position can be, the more effective they're going to be in one, in transitioning to the surface, and two, not losing speed when doing so. The last component of effective alignment is recovering the arms, recovering the legs, in anticipation of beginning swimming breaststroke. And so swimmers aren't creating any propulsion. They have to move their arms up to, in front of their body. They have to move their feet to their butt, and they have to do so in a way that minimizes resistance. So they need to keep the arms tight to the body, like this swimmer is doing right here. They need to move them fast, and the same thing with the legs. Watch how quickly she recovered her legs. The longer she takes, the more drag she's going to create. So she recovers those feet quickly, gets them up, and then kicks out of it. So swimmers have to maintain as effective an alignment as they can when they're recovering the limbs, and they want that to happen fast. The longer it takes, the more they're going to slow down. So if they can keep everything tight to the body, and they can do so fast, they're going to be able to get to the surface quickly, and they're going to be able to do so without losing as much speed. A final aspect of the pullout, if we watch this somewhere on the left here, is managing the timing of when to initiate the pullout and then when to initiate the transition to the surface. There's not going to be a clean, concrete, and obvious point at which that transition should occur. Basically, what it's going to be is it's going to be the point at which they've slowed down sufficiently that they need to start to use the pullout to create speed or they've slowed down to their racing speed and they need to get to the surface. And really it should probably happen before that just so that they don't lose any speed at all. So swimmers have to be able to feel when they're beginning to lose speed and then they have to understand that that's when they have to make that transition to the pullout or they have to make that transition to the surface because while they can prolong the distance of the pullout, that's ultimately gonna cost them more time because it's slower. Again, it's a difficult skill to coach because it's something that has to be felt by the swimmer the more aware they can become of when they're losing speed, the more aware they can become of when to transition into the next phase of the stroke. The better they get at that skill, the more speed they're going to be able to maintain, the faster they're going to go. Breast out pullouts come down to three key concepts. They need to create as much propulsion as they can by using the arms to create a big surface area, face directly backwards, move it as far backwards as possible with as much acceleration as possible. That's going to give them the pop that sends them forward. 
add a quick, tight, snappy dolphin kick to help that process. And then from an alignment standpoint, they need to be as streamlined as possible, as horizontal as possible, and they need to maintain that position as they initiate the dolphin kick and as they recover the arms to get to the surface. And then when it comes to timing, they want to start to pull out. They want to start the transition to the surface to minimize any losses of speed so that they can keep their momentum and they can go as fast as possible. Like all the other strokes, it all comes down to the same three things, propulsion, alignment, and timing. And when swimmers can figure out how to do those three skills really well, they're going to have effective pullouts. Hope that was helpful. As always, keep it simple.